Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to show you something a bit different. Um, instead of a full video, I'm giving you a development blog style of video and show you my intermediate steps. Uh, please let me know what you think about this in the comment below and have fun. So I've discovered a problem with my USB connection. I was attempting to route USB through the rotating connector here. And I have it set up here on a breakout board. Power is coming from my power supply, uh, 12 volt to the internal regulator and then passed on to the ESP32 that sits here. So what happens is I turn it on, everything is great. The PC recognized uh, the connection. And if I open serial terminal, that's what I get. And I can send commands and this works and works and works and works but the moment I wiggle on this thing and then rotate the connection a bit and after a while yeah it locks up nothing to be done anymore I can't even like restart the connection if I do this Um, the USB connection is still bound up. So what I have to do to fix it is unplug the USB and plug it back in. And now it works again. So um, looks like I have to discard my plans for routing USB through here. Yep, so the USB thing turned out to be a kind of a dead end, <laughs> um, which means I have to redesign this part of the housing because I no longer need the USB plug in here. Also, this PCB uh, USB connector I no longer need, and also this USB connector I no longer need. I think I will just um, power the ESP uh, via the 5 volt input pin and not with the USB cable as I thought I would. Maybe if I didn't print everything in black peel, I, the camera could focus better, but yeah, another time. <laughs> Let me explain a bit what I did with this PCB. This is the PCB at the bottom of the, the big L-shaped thing. And what this does is it reroutes and converts the, the signals from the slip ring rotary connector. And we have here the signals for the slider motor, which slides the carriage back and forth. Two voltage uh, converters on board, one for 8.4 volts. This will power the camera. And the same thing here for 5 volts, which will power um, the ESP and all the low voltage electronics. This is just a big 12 volt connector for the power supply to the motors. In here, um, this will route two signals from the, from the CNC shield. And I used um, the spindle and I think the cooling or something. Basically the idea here is I, I send a spindle command to a, a gerbil, which will set this pin high. And through a different circuit, it will trigger the focus mechanism of the camera. The same for the trigger mechanism. This happens over here. I've done this via two optocouplers to uh, uh, completely decouple any electronics inside the camera from um, yeah, well, everything I'm doing here, you know, it's a ex expensive piece of equipment and yeah, I don't want to use the same ground there if it gets sapped or something. Um, I, I switch the polarity of connectors and make, an, make a mistake and I don't want to, want to be routing 12 volt into my camera and fry it. So two optocouplers here. This will just short this connection to ground or this connection to ground. And as a ground, I have its own camera trigger ground. So there is no connection to the main circuit whatsoever. So nothing can go wrong here. Uh, I tested this on a breadboard, which I will show you now. Okay, so that's the trigger and focus circuit here. That's a connector to, uh, with all the signals to the camera. So 
I have two 8.4 volt uh, rails here. I did this because I don't know how much power the camera will draw. I, I measured it in a normal uh, operation. It's about 600 uh, milliamps. Normally one of the, the slip ring circuits can handle one amp. So this might be overpowered, but let's say I'm connecting a bigger uh, lens or I have different recording modes that need more power. It's just, it's just good to have more current capacity. What goes in must come out, so ground is doubled as well here and here. Here are the trigger out signals from our little optocoupler. Here, trigger out, trigger out, and the trigger ground. These are just single signals, there is no uh, power over it. It's just, just a signal. Those go through a slip ring to a TRS connector, which is just like a little, yeah, like you have on your headphones. Um, one <laughs> important catch, the camera has a 2.5 2.5 millimeter connector and your normal headphones are 3.5 millimeters so you will need an adapter from 2.5 to 3.5 in stereo. In here um, this is the end stop for the slider. I added a little capacitor here which I um, have not populated on the PCB now. It's just a precaution if this gets too noisy because it's a very long cable uh, I, I can add a capacitor here to hopefully clean it up. If not, I have to do something a bit, a bit more sophisticated. But um, so far I have never had use for this. But yeah, let's see. Down here, this is the connector to the slip ring with all the connections that go basically from our carriage through the cable chain and to the beginning of the rail where you plug everything in. Again, 12 volt doubled. And uh, now that I've deleted the USB, I could go like three times 12 volt, three times 12 volt and three times ground. Gives us 36 watts. We could pull through here to power everything. Might not be a bad idea. I have to touch the other PCB uh, anyway. So uh, here's the signal for the slider end stop, which is just one signal because the other signal is ground. So it's just uh, a switch that connects to ground. And down here come the connections for the slider motor, which moves the carriage. So you see um, this PCB does a little bit of uh, power conversion, 12 volt, 8.4 and 5 volt. It does the optic coupler thing for trigger and focus. And it reroutes the signals from this big connector to individual connectors uh, where they are needed. You see the USB connector has left us and I have to think how I do, um, yeah, how I will power the, the ESP. But I think um, maybe something, something similar to this one. You see these, with these connectors, these are end stop, so signal and ground. That's ESP, so focus and trigger. And then I could just give it two more pins here. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of power, it's just five volts, yeah. Okay, two more pins here. Then I can just make a big six pin connector and, and plug it in and have everything and sort it out on the other side. Yep. Okay, so I've added a power connector here, but when I assembled the thing, I felt that these are a bit too far, well, left from my perspective, so up here. Um, I want to get them down to here because that's about where um, the cables come out. I can show you in the full 3D view. So, I ah, okay, that's where the USB used to be. And that's a big plug for the camera signals. Over here is the ESP connection, so trigger and focus. The end stop, which are those two, and then motor from the slider. And all this stuff has to bend around and come through here. You know, uh, here. So you, you go straight, left, and straight. 
but because we lost the USB connector, I can pull them a bit more here so I can focus the cables through here. Okay, let me just do this. Okay, <laughs> just been thinking. Um, I have these connectors, these are two pins, two pins, two pins. So six, six pins in total, I could replace these with, with a two by three uh, angled connector. So I could squeeze it all a bit more together and then everything is a little bit more centered because um, for the motor cable, I use um, a stronger ribbon cable because it has to, to carry a bit more juice and it's stiff to bend around corners. So maybe, maybe if I can squeeze it a little bit more, it would be better. Yeah, let me, let me replace them. Now the annoying thing is, because I have the free version of Fusion, I have this now grabbed, if I let go, or one, you see, I cannot place it. Because in the free version of Fusion, you cannot have negative coordinates. And you cannot put stuff in here, because this privilege costs extra. I can, however, put it here. <laughs> Yeah, when designing PCBs, I want to keep uh, ground be be between the, the dirty signals, we say. So you see this, these motors here, motor signals, they are high current and they can switch on and off rapidly, which means they will induce magnetic fields around. And if you have a little slider end stop signal, which is the end of a very long lead, like uh, a meter long or longer, uh, this is just just an antenna for, antenna for dirt. So I have ground in between, which will collect all the dirt and, and move it away to ground and protect my, my signal here. Uh, with the 12 volt line, I'm not so worried because it's, it's DC for once. Even if it has dirt, I have multiple capacitors on the way to filter it out a bit. So that's fine, that's fine, I think. But here I have to get fairly close. So maybe I will reroute some of these signals. Um, usually what I do now is to clean up the, the ground plane a bit. Um, well, this is not a, a like a high frequency application or anything with um, noise sensitive inputs. This is all slow 5 volt logic and yeah, high power motor, motor signals so they are not susceptible to any uh, noise. But yeah, usually what you don't want is big gaps in your um, ground plane like this. So if you can, you see these 
uh, signals here. They are all 5 volt logic. They are uh, not in danger. Here they are all together. They don't send out a lot of noise. Nothing in here, in fact. So you can keep them together. Now um, we check for these here, the thermal reliefs around the ground pins. Uh, we want them to be well connected. Oh yeah, ha! Almost forgot. Um, what I did forget here is uh, the end stop signals. I have uh, optical end stops, these here, optical end stops, so they need three pins, um, ground, then a supply voltage and the signal comes out. And the signal is, you know, I've showed you the, the optocopter earlier and this is, yeah, pretty, pretty similar. This one, this is a, a light ray <laughs> in here. It's an emitter and detector, and if you put something in between and interrupt the light ray, the detector no longer conducts, and then the switch is open. Or the other way around. <laughs> but, you know, if something goes through, it detects it. And I had not foreseen these um, connections on the PCB at that time. So I want to make room for this one here same thing here and I want to um, pull down these cables all the way to the base PCB here and this one gets plugged in here as well and then everything um, is routed to a new 6-pin connector which will then be an 8-pin connector and gets distributed up here because you see these black and white strips here they are for the end stops and this one here is serial and power and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I will pull everything down here, sort it out, and then move it up with one single connector. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So um, yeah, I will go with two, uh, two by three, so a six pin angled connector again. Now we just have to be careful where to put power and ground. Just check if this is correct. Uh, don't know if you can see this. That's voltage signal ground. You're way down in the corner. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, voltage signal ground. So signal has to go in the middle. resistor uh, because these here there will be uh, uh, voltage regulator modules plugged in here uh, I didn't I could have um, designed a voltage reg regulator on board and populated it and sorted it but there are these tiny uh, <laughs> there are these handy little modules like this guy here and you just plug them in and set the voltage with a screwdriver and you're done. You don't have to do anything. And yeah, that's what I'm using. So uh, I need the space right of this connector for them to be plugged in. 
so I can add the other connector here. I think um, we will have to add signals to the backside. I wanted to avoid it because of vanity. <laughs> but um, yeah, with all, all these end stop signals they had to go from here to here. I don't think that's possible. Well, it's not, not impossible. It, it wouldn't result in a very tidy um, design. Okay, I don't think I will add capacitors to the other two end stops because the leads are very short. They are like uh, 15 to 20 centimeters, uh, whereas the other one, the slider end stop, is a meter or more. So, yeah, yeah, no capacitors for you guys. That's fine now. Now I want to do two things. Um, one, I want to check the silk screen, um, maybe add a little bit more and correct some errors I made with the last, last version. And then I want to check the 3D design to see if my uh, plug and, and the connector positioning is reasonable. save this and um, push it to the full 3D model. And there we are. Now let's have a look at the path. So all these wires have to go through this gap here. This one is the most, the most rigid one, the motor connector. And this has a pretty good path in, through here. The other ones, they are flexible thin uh, ribbon cables. I don't, I don't have to worry about them. Okay, this looks good. So here, this is a section of the, the slider rail, which will here, I will mount to here. Um, I think with some inserts, maybe through holes, if it's not reliable enough. That's the end stop. The motor in here, I have to, uh, to redo parts of this anyway because this big uh, cutout here that's for the power uh, switch and it's way too massive for this little space so I have to give it more space but now because the uh, USB connector is missing I could move this one just right over here yep okay okay uh, one fun thing I like to do 
uh, when messing around with like cutouts and stuff um, I want to have this hole over here um, how I could do it is redo the sketch plane and just move it in the sketch plane in here but you see that's a huge old and complicated design or convoluted and I'm, I'm sure it will break if I do this so the other thing you can do um, I'm sure you know the move uh, move copy uh, command you can do this with faces so I select all my faces I want to move and you over there so that's all of them around and now I can just move this hole over here let me see yeah okay so the wall is a bit bit thicker here okay I will attempt to move it uh, with, the, with the rest but I'm pretty sure this will break because it's also behind here and or it will mess up the, the wall over there. Let's see. Ooh! <laughs> so, okay. Now I can just move it here. I wanna have it like, uh, I don't know, here. What's in here? Motor connector. This is the power. Should be good, enough space. Okay. Now for USB. Yeah, uh, no, two things. Uh, for one, USB has changed. Uh, there has, I have to remove it. But also we added more um, power to this one, more power connections. 10, 11, 12. It's 12 volts and six seven eight no five is it five six and eight is ground yeah who made this decision <sighs> do i bother you know what i'm gonna say this was on purpose because now there is a ground connection between the slider and stop and this is very well protected from uh, noise from the motor signals, so this was on purpose. And look how well the signal is protected. <laughs> uh, as if it was on purpose. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, now I can solve a different problem I've been having, and that is this is very tight here <laughs> um, it, it works it, it fits that's that's not a problem but uh, yeah now that USB is gone I can just move this to the right and the situation is way more relaxed here uh, instead of relying on a yeah what's that from here to here <laughs> 1.9 millimeters clearance yeah, okay, so we can fix this and move this to here. Yep, way better. <laughs> this is still a bit, a bit close, I think. 3.7. But, uh, okay, I'm coming with all the cables from here. That's my, my cable chain. With a slight bend, it will come into here. Yeah, I think I have to do some bending tests here to see if maybe this shouldn't be like a, a straight up connector because I can then make a big loop and down. Could be more relaxed than going sideways here. I will have to test this. And also, yeah, um, while trying to assemble this thing, this one, this was too, too tight.
because the, the actual uh, plug or socket on the motor is wider than this. So I will have to widen this a bit. Another thing that was, um, yeah, another thing that was in the way is this here, because I have cables coming from these pins, and that's way too close. You can't make a bend or anything. So I will move this insert to the left and delete a good chunk of this ledge here. Uh, yeah, let's see how this looks. Ah. So I want to move the face again and you see now I can't get a straight angle. It's yeah I can't do this just by hand. So the way you have to do it is you select your edge. Now you have the, the wonky angle and you set set pivot and now you look for a straight edge like this one here. Then done, confirm and now everything you pivot or, or shift or move will be done along this edge. So um, I will now check if this bending angle makes sense and see you in a bit. Okay, I will now add a little insert to a, a little insert to here. Even though, even though I will discard this part later, but it's just to fix the, the cable chain. to the cable chain that's how it will operate later and now we want to check the bending radius of these cables like so see if you can see this yeah like so Okay, now that we've done our little bending test, let's uh, replace this angled connector with a straight one. straight connector here this should be easier to, to plug in and yeah well if it's not uh, I can just solder in an angled connector that's that's really no problem I like the design looks really sharp good Save. 